although we do have natural detox capacity, that capacity evolved during a time when the toxic burden was far, far lower. So we again go back to this idea of ancestral health. In our ancestral environment, we didn't have exposure to massive amounts of heavy metals like lead and mercury through you know, industrial contamination or cadmium or arsenic. There's naturally occurring arsenic in some foods, um, but you know, the amounts that we would have been exposed to are nothing like what we're exposed to today. We didn't have pesticide and herbicide exposure, things like glyphosate. We didn't have industrial chemicals like flame retardants and the chemicals that come from jet fuel. We didn't have indoor mold and other biotoxins that form when living uh, in indoor environments. Of course, there are outdoor molds, but they don't have the same impact on our health uh, because they're dispersed. You know, you're living in an outdoor environment that's spreads around in the air and, and those molds actually often tend to be different as well. So we didn't have the massive toxic burden uh, that we have today. And so our natural detox mechanisms did not evolve to deal with the toxic burden that we're facing today. And evolution is not fast. So our genes and our you know, physiological systems cannot change quickly enough to keep up with the massively growing toxic burden that we're experiencing. So that's one of the main issues is that if we consider what determines whether somebody detoxes appropriately, one of the main factors is the burden of toxins that they're exposed to. And the higher that burden is, the harder the detox system will have to work and the less likely it is that it will be able to perform as well as it needs to in order to clear all the toxins out of the body. The other factors that are important are how competent is that individual's detox system. And you see a lot of variation here based on genetics, epigenetics, which is the expression of genes, nutrient intake, because our detox system depends on many different nutrients that we get through the diet. And because of the shift away from a nutrient-dense diet that was our ancestral diet to a, a modern, you know, highly refined processed food diet that is nutrient poor, a lot of people just aren't getting enough of the nutrients that they need in order to detoxify effectively. And then you have what we could call anti-nutrients, you know, the, the sugar and the processed and refined foods and the chemicals that are actually toxins in the diet that put additional stress on the detox system. And then you have things like chronic stress, which you know, slows down uh, the detox system, physical inactivity, lack of exposure to natural light, like all of the other aspects of the modern lifestyle that compromise detox pathways. So when you put all of that together, it leads to the unfortunate conclusion that a lot of us are probably not detoxing in an optimal way and therefore even though we do have some innate natural ability to do that because of the toxic burden and because of our own individual and societal threats that compromise detox, many of us probably need a little bit of additional support or a lot of additional support in some cases.